Greetings, fellow humans, and welcome to Sam and Max Hit the Books. I'm Max. I'm Sam. We're here today to review uh, some comics that came out on the 8th of January in 2020. Um, the store didn't get or wasn't allowed to sell me Savage Avengers for some reason. Uh, I guess wasn't even... allowed to sell you? Well, they got the issue, but then they got like a letter from Diamond that was like, this doesn't actually come out till next week, but I'm pretty sure it was on Comixology. <laughs> anyway, um, we'll get into what I did pick up, starting with uh, the 29th issue of The Immortal Hulk, and that's by Al Ewing and Joe Bennett, as it usually is. Yeah. Um, this issue was okay. I feel like we've spent a lot of issues just sitting in the office with uh, the rock song guy, Dario Agar, the Minotaur. It is true, but at the same time, I did feel like this one was a little bit more interesting than the last couple of issues with him in it. I cannot recall why at this moment. Oh. There was some, well, there was the monsters, the monsters are cool. I'll tell you why, what it is. It's that Joe Bennett wasn't drawing the last couple of issues. And now with Joe Bennett back, all that he's able to make oh. is somewhat... I mean, there's definitely some action. We got some great kaiju showing up for yeah. Hulk to fight. The kaiju. I love the, uh, the Lovecraft one. It's just called Lovecraft, and it's a big squid. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, all, it's all very well done. And uh, I like that Bruce knows it's a trap, and he's going to go anyway. And there's a little conversation with Samson and uh, Jen, who I guess can turn back into human whenever she wants, but for some reason she's not talking to Bruce. Right. When Bruce comes, uh, she, I guess, flares up into her, her, her monster form. Right. It's like, it's like a natural defensive measure of some kind. <laughs> Just, I'm mad at you. Right. <laughs> So, uh, pretty pretty good. I like that the issue ended with Hulk being eaten by a Sarlacc pit monster. Yeah, that was excellent, too. And, and yeah, the whole uh, talking about Joe Fix-It and how he's liking the sun now. Right. He's become sunshine, Joe, and he says he doesn't like Bruce, but otherwise uh, all, the, all the Hulks and Bruce are getting along. <laughs> Yeah, I do enjoy the conversation about the Hulk psychology and how things are adapting and why things might be happening the way they are. I, I like, yeah, that the characters in the book are sitting down and going like, well, maybe this is happening because of this, which right. is usually something that the fans are doing. Right, and even Roxxon's like, wait, what the hell's the sun doing in the background of that Hulk video? He can come out during the sun now? It's sundown. Hmm, maybe he's weaker at that time. Yeah, okay. the attention to detail is well done. Yeah. Um, I liked it a fair mm. amount. I'm going to give it a 7. I also give it a 7. Pretty good. Uh, next up, we're going to be talking about uh, Conan, Serpent War. Uh, that's by Jim Zub with uh, Luca Pizzari on uh, art. Yeah, this. <clears throat> I, for some reason, this... I, I feel like it'd be better if the lettering was different. <laughs> uh, there, there are a few things you could do to make this better. Uh, put the team together would yeah there's only one good? issue to go <clears throat> only one issue to go they're not even together though they're kind of in this issue in the same place i guess because it's two different timelines and conan and uh fighter what's her name uh, uh red Agnes. Agnes, yes. or agnes red agnes yeah uh <clears throat> they're they're doing one thing in one time and moon knight and Solomon Kane are doing the same thing in another time, which we get with uh, this art where they're standing over the, the place and then... And it's the same thing over again? Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty cool. But I gotta be honest with you, I feel like the book would be way improved, even though it's called Conan Serpent War. If this was just a Moon Knight and... Conan. and, and uh, oh, Solomon Kane. And Solomon that would Kane be good, too. Up, I'd read that. That's dope. Like, I'm into their team of so much more... Than Conan and Agnes because like normally Conan would be all over this chick like I've now read all of the, a bunch of the classic Robert E Howard Conan stories so I have a more oh, yeah. set thing loves, in my mind uh, tough women yeah it's like I like Conan isn't allowed to act like Conan because it's stupid Marvel Comics version and yeah. it, it rubs me the wrong way so give me more <laughs> Moon Knight right give me more Moon Knight and uh, I did like in this one uh, how it was Kanchu who maybe saved the day, probably saved the day, because it seems like they've all been manipulated, but then Kanchu is like, hey, I, I, you haven't been able to hear me until now, but put that damn bracelet on. Yeah, right, yeah, there's actually another fight going on on the astral plane, and I need you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Midnight, he's, he's just like, all right, boom. And uh, yeah, so we'll see what he does 
uh, in the astral plane. Uh, this does make it look like they're together. Uh, that's a very picture. That's a big cheat, and I don't like that panel. Yeah, yeah. Because of the way they're doing that. That's lame. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, yeah, they're trying to squeeze them into the art together, but they still haven't actually met up. I, I don't like that. Exactly. So, you know, it's entertaining enough, but a lot of it just doesn't feel like it's really going very far. It feels like it's enough. I feel like I read four pages once I get to the end. Right, exactly. <laughs> Uh, because of that, I give this a five. I'm giving it a four. All right. And we would, if there was more issues than one left to go, we wouldn't be getting more. But we might as well finish this off. <laughs> yeah. All right. Moving on to issue twenty of Hawkman. That's by Robert Venditti and uh, somebody, a Saren. Oh, uh, uh, Fernando. I even knew that. Right. Right. And uh, I really liked this issue a lot. I yeah, me that, too. I thought that this one really got back into yep. all the things we like about the Hawkman book, like his own history and digging through things. Right. And, and space adventure. And space adventure, and we got the little bit where it was the Ranian Hawkman doing a thing. Yep. And, uh, yeah, just all of his conversations with Sky Tyrant and the Batman Who Laughs shows up and kind <laughs> of, like, explains everything that's happening in more detail. <laughs> yeah, it's just hilarious. <laughs> just inside his head. It's just like, wow, I didn't expect uh, this result, but it's great. And uh, the Adam shows up, and it turns out he's been there the whole time because you get that great reveal. Yeah. And he's talking to Shara over the comms. And he's like, ah, nah, no worries. Like, I can... Uh, I can get close to take down Hawkman if I need to. Oh, yeah, that's because he's sitting on Hawkman's brain in some sort of, like, <laughs> miniature lab. Yeah. I had no idea before this that he considers Hawkman to be his best friend in the world. I really enjoy that duo. Yeah, that's, like, that's pretty cool. Yeah. It makes you like Hawkman even more. Yeah. Because big... the Adam's so cool, obviously. And uh, how about the uh, planet of, like, enormous, enormous men, <laughs> where uh, they have, like, a cult of Hawkman that has been passed down to protect this weapon that he hid there. Great. Yeah. That was, was great. It was freaking hilarious. I love this guy and his giant version of the Hawkman suit that he has passed down from the ward, from the father to son, I guess, or warrior to warrior. It's, yeah. it's just a good issue. This It's... It's getting back to, you know, it's not like Hawkman standing in the middle of Wall Street, like, arguing with himself and <laughs> saying, rah, at some civilians, but never really seeming too dangerous. Right, right. Or getting sucked into a shadow world that's uh, only a danger to himself. And uh, so I am going to give this a 7. Yeah, I'd also give it a 7. Return to form. Yeah, and I also got to say, man, Sky Tyrant looks awful on the cover. <laughs> I don't want to. I'm not going to say who the cover artist is, but um, but that's all. That's awful. Yeah, it's not great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ah. Next up, we're going to be talking about uh, Batman number eighty six by James Tiny and the Fourth, and. Uh, uh, what it's, uh, oh, it's Tony, Daniel. Tony S. Daniel. Yeah, doing the good Tony Daniel. I really like his art in this. And I just uh, before we move on, uh, he said on Twitter the other day, so I want to mention it that his name is pronounced Tynan. Tynan. Yeah, James uh, Tynan. But anyway, yeah, this is remember. it's issue eighty six, but it's issue one of post Tom King Batman. That is true. And uh, yeah, this is uh, you know we're we're continuing with the. Uh, Alfred is dead. Oh, he dead. Uh, plot. Uh, Alfred is so dead, and uh, that's that's hard for Batman. This is the first book that I thought did something interesting with it when they have him all tired from his fight with Deathstroke, and he's like calls Alfred. Yeah, where he calls that. Right, it's a sad <coughs> moment. <laughs> oh, excuse me, I got a real tickle in my throat here. Yeah, this guy. What's this guy's name? Ben Lucius. Lucius. That's it. Yes, Lucius Fox. Lucius. The new Alfred. Yes. Yes, Lucius Fox, uh, yeah, he, he's in it. He built something for Batman. Uh, a crawly, new... walky, fly thing. Right, it seems to be like a spidery thing that can fly. If I have a huge complaint with this issue, it's that they never showed it to us. Like, I don't know if that was on purpose, like, <clears throat> it's going to be a reveal what that thing actually looks yes. like. Right. Or Tony Dane was just like, I'm not going to take the time to draw this. I don't know which it is, but uh, <laughs> I'm a little disappointed that... Because they, they showed us it, chunks. We, right. You see it briefly in its plain form, but yeah. you don't really see it in its crawler form. It's some sort of... Oh, Jesus. I just realized what it is. It's that fucking... Remember in... You saw Justice League, the live action movie, right? Uh, yeah, but I don't remember it very much. Yeah, they're fighting in like a big... Very like, well. It's a big circular thing near the end, and Batman's got like 
his thing that he's in that's like crawling up the sides on legs. It's a thing from Justice League. That, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll take your word for I'm it. I certain. really don't remember that movie. <laughs> and I saw it in the theater. That's true. That's true. Yeah, but uh, yeah, this it's a pretty cool issue. Batman fights a Deathstroke, and uh, there's some other assassins, I believe. Catwoman's and, still a major part of the book. Right, it's not ditching that completely at right, all. Right, right, but she's good. She's, she's doing cool. her own thing, but also helping out. Yeah, right. I mean helping out, but in her own place. Man, if this <laughs> if this was Mister King writing it, it would have been like poetry about why she really wants to steal some jewelry from these people and isn't going to because of you, Bat. Right. And this is just like, this is my character. I'm, I'm going to be that character. <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty cool. And then you got a bunch of clown mask guys running around. Uh, you know, I wonder who they're working for. Yeah. So, yeah, this is it's pretty good. It's very action-y. I'll give it a 7. Yeah, I like it. I'm giving it a 7 as well. Mm. Uh, it's back. Batman. Yeah. Batman. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on to issue 5 of X-Force. Uh, by Benjamin Percy and Joshua Kassara. And X-Force continues to be off the fucking wall <laughs> because Wolverine, who got bisected in the previous issue, yeah. um, totally... Didn't die. Didn't die and is, like, 100% able to be the still the best fighter in the room. <laughs> it's almost Venture Bros level. Right, when he's on top of the guy with his claw in him and he's still just from the torso up, the smile on his face. The that grin, that evil. That is, yeah, that's Oof. horrific. Yeah. I really enjoyed the art in this issue. It's, yeah, the very, very rough. And, uh, God, when oh, yeah. he gets peppered with bullets. Right. Oh, my God. And then the Forger comes in. And Forge what is... What the Forger does to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Forges him anew. So Forge has made himself a Groot suit out of Krakoa stuff. Yeah. With, like, bug wings on the back. It's very, uh... Like aliens, '90s action figure toy line suit of armor. If you if you ever had one of those toys, right? Tell me, does with uh, with with Wolverine? uh, Wolverine's legs that were left on Krakow. <laughs> well, you know they don't want to be regrowing Wolverines all the time because they only have that limited amount of adamantium. So he finds Wolverine's bottom half and he slaps it back together with Wolverine's top half. He just slaps them back together real violently. Real violently. It's hilarious. <laughs> Like, it really is. Like he's slamming like uh, two Legos together really hard. Like, Stah! did they they had they had to re uh, adamantium Wolverine after cloning him? Is that something that we saw? Yeah, and they in the last issue when they went down to Forge's lab, he the Wolverine even walked up to the tub and was like, "Oh, this is the pure stuff." Right, Forge right. Said, yeah, we have to keep it on deck in case we have to grow a new you. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. That's, that's hilarious. Yeah, so there is like an adamantium skeleton of Wolverine from that space station in House of X <laughs> that's just like floating around the solar oh system. <laughs> that's a good plot for the future. <laughs> just Wolverine's adamantium skeleton gets like uh, taken by a scroll who like puts his body all around it, and now he's got Wolverine's skeleton. Ooh, that's a good just, one. Marvel, it's call just me. Floating through space, and somebody's collecting all the pieces. Yeah, they can put together a bunch of Wolverines. <laughs> Um, yeah, and they take out the humans that were coming after him. It seems like they're a bunch of mercs for hire, and uh, Domino almost kills them all, but doesn't, so good for her. But yeah. then Beast and Jean Grey, like, torture the hell out of the guy. Right, because the <laughs> law is kill no human. Kill no human. Yeah. Yeah, and Jean no Grey's a really born that. human. But, uh, man, they're doing something to him. They've got Krakoa, like, growing shit into his back. Like, who knows what the hell is going on here. Oh, yeah, it's dark. Yeah. It's the darkest I've ever seen Beast. Yeah, no kidding. It's not even Dark Beast. It's just regular Beast doing this. Yeah. Um, so I really, really <laughs> enjoyed this issue. I I don't know if it's quite an 8. I'm giving it a high 7. <clears throat> yeah, I'd give it a, I'll give it a 7 as well. I know what you mean, though. <clears throat> All right, so now we're going to talk about New Mutants, number five, by Hickman and Ivan Reese, right? Uh, no, it's not Ivan it's Reese. Not Ivan. Ivan Reese looks way better than this. You're right. It's the other <clears throat> one. Uh, it's Rod Reese. That's yes. it. Yes, we're back to Hickman's plot. Right. <laughs> we're, we're back to the New Mutants in space. Mondo and what's his face? Yes, when you open this comic, you're immediately assaulted with just box after box uh, of text, uh, which I, I, you know, I skimmed. 
when I first opened this dish yard, got, I opened it. I saw all that shit on the front. This was the last comic I had left to read. I you closed it, it back up, put it down, did something else for a while, read it the next day because I was like, I. I did the same thing. What well, are you doing except for the next day, I, I I put it down, and then like an hour or two later, I sat down and read it. Yeah, that's, but, yeah. Don't do that. Not first page, especially not first page, <clears throat> and then. The info pages on these, I felt, were also very much like, I don't need to read this crap. The info page this time was the most, like, action figure back of the box. Like, we're describing <laughs> everybody's toy line thing. Right. Paragraph. <clears throat> For all these mercenary guys. Hickman's like, I designed the Black Order, and they were in movies and made me money, so now I'm going like, to try to design another, like, big evil space team with all these cool guys with dark names, like... Like Sega. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's not great. It's not great. That's, that's what we're saying. And the art on some pages, like the pages with Gladiator, like standing in his throne room and talking, looks awesome. Like it looks really good. Like yeah, the coloring yeah, the is on point. And stuff. Great. And but then yeah, you get some weird stuff as well. And then you get to the end of the book, and shit just starts to straight up look unfinished. Oh, that's an, yeah, that, that's interesting. Like, you know, lots of white outlines and, and around things, and uh, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. So, yeah, the, so act, the effects are uh, <laughs> not Hick splendid. Hickman made a joke on Twitter about how oh, the artist only had two days to draw this because the script is so late, and then he had a back and forth with the artist where he's like, "Well, we know it wasn't that bad," but it's like I straight up think Hickman gave, turned in this issue like twelve days ago or something, <laughs> and uh, Reese had to had to blast through it, and so the first part that. looked great, <clears throat> right? And that's why there's a lot of backgrounds in the beginning and then the backgrounds at the end. Yeah, exactly. All the telltale signs of a rushed book. Got yeah. that schedule. They've got they print that schedule in the back of every X Men issue, and it's like this is the order you got to read them in, so they can't have one hit the stands late. Right, and then here's another thing: uh, these two mutants, uh, Mondo mm -hmm. and oh, yeah. the other guy, yeah. when they get the call, Chamber, yeah, Chamber, and they're just like drinking Fuck on the them. ship, and they're like, oh, I guess something's going on on the spaceship that we're on. Wanna? help out about it, and they're just like, nah, pacifism. And then the I, ship gets blowed up. I hate them. Right. Those guys. Those guys are the two biggest idiots in the world. You're on a fucking spaceship. Excuse my language. You're on a, uh, a, 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 a Frelin spaceship. Uh, you do not just uh, sit there while people blow it up. <laughs> so I give this one a three. I also give it a three. <clears throat> Come on, Hickman. Come on. We know you. Yeah. Remember X Men last week? It was great. What's he doing? <laughs> That's the best power to ten. Oh my god. So good. All right. <clears throat> so this is the reason why I didn't give that other book, the X Force, a seven, because <laughs> this is the eighth this week. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be Venom issue twenty two. That's by Johnny Cates and Mark Bagley. And who boy? Yeah. I love. How callbacky! Like this is such a fan servicey art because, <laughs> like the island and Eddie's got his like uh, stash of old weapons and stuff. But it's like the Terminator too. Let's go out to the desert and find like the ammo cache. Oh yeah, and then he talks about the sound system that he put in. The sound system he put in so that he could, uh, yeah, he replaced. Although it's interesting, it's questionable why he put that back in while he was still Venom. <laughs> why he would put in something that could uh, hurt him? Yeah. Was that before Carnage? Yeah, I guess it was. Yeah, because yeah. Spidey came to the island to get him for Carnage. Right, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I, I do like, though, that he was realistic about the condition of the weapons, that, like, the guns and shit that was left behind all isn't really going to work because it's rusty. Right. Um, but he's got a little bit of stuff. He's got a little bit of flamethrower. Some grenades, maybe. And even the callback to that arc, because remember when Spider-Man went to go get Venom, uh, Venom did the trick to Spider-Man where he sent the symbiote down through the sand and popped it up near his feet in order to grab him by the head and then yeah, yeah. the symbiote remembered that shit and uh, did the same thing to Eddie huh. while they're having their fight Yeah, and uh, Carnage has uh, got the Venom symbiote in it but it's obviously stronger for some reason I don't know why maybe the Venom symbiote's a pacifist yeah, oh yeah well Carnage well, has always been stronger Carnage's physically. symbiote <clears throat> is insidious and uh, crazy and magical and it's really able to make a lot of copies of the symbiote to give to all of the various forest creatures. Although it seems to be using more Venom symbiote than Carnage on them. 
That's true. Maybe it's just controlling part pieces, just a little bit of carnage. And, and I think it's mad. It's still unclear whether the Venom symbiote still had like all those codexes that it absorbed as a separate thing or <laughs> or what? No, nah, those are temporary, right. mostly. Um, and yeah, these kid, he's got a piece of carnage. It seems like as well. Yeah, I'm wondering if that's a slice of carnage or if it's another codex. Yeah, and where is? Because couldn't this be the hybrid codex? Based on that color? Um, well, I suppose. I don't know. Sometimes Carnage looks like that, though. Yeah, yeah. Usually, these days. And what happened to the new one? Uh, Sleeper. He's the cat. Oh, right. I think he's just chilling. He's just around, right? Yeah, I assume <laughs> he'll pop back up. Case doesn't tend to forget. Right, but it seems like he could be helpful. <laughs> I know, right? He should be hanging around with Dylan. Oh, no. Oh, or, he didn't like him because uh, he was taking control of his mind, right? No, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, spoiler alert real quick It's the end of the episode So if you don't want to be spoiled about the big thing in this episode Thanks for listening Anyway, Eddie has to cut off his own hand In order to <laughs> keep the Carnage symbiote from uh, getting <clears throat> into him Yeah uh, getting his, into him. his left hand um, He sliced it right off it's Evil Dead style Yeah, Evil Dead style And uh, dope <laughs> <laughs> Yeah Because you know, obviously he doesn't need a hand To be Venom So he just makes the hand that's true. So, <clears throat> I it, I hope Eddie never gets a hand back for the rest of his life. Except uh, in this picture for the next issue, he totally has a hand. Yeah, but they have to put out these covers like three months in advance, so you don't want to spoil the big last uh, page twist of an issue by showing the, the cover of the next issue with him missing a hand. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Although I do fully think that if they want to go that way, they can just have the symbiote regenerate the hand. <laughs> but uh, That's true. But I, I hope Eddie is... I hope he's disabled forever because then he can also be a hero to the disabled. Oh, that's true. Just like Flash Thompson was when he had no uh, legs. Oh, uh, yeah. It was Venom. Right. <laughs> it was Venom. <laughs> yeah. So I also give it an eight. Yep, it's an eight. It was great. Mm -hmm. I'm loving Venom Island. That Mark Bagley yeah. art looks awesome. It does. And great cover as well with the Venom uh, symbol in the, in the waves. Just subtle enough to be there, but to still just be on the way. Like, if you just cover mm -hmm. up a section, it just looks like... Light on the waves. Right, exactly. It looks amazing. It's an excellent piece of art. Yeah. Um, so that's it for this week. Thank you so much to everybody for listening. As always, uh, please leave a like if you had a good time. And uh, we will be back in the near future with even more comic reviews. Oh, yeah.